Mitch Hilly. All of us know about drugs. We see them all over the place, whether it be on TV, a news ad for over-the-counter prescription drugs, uh, whether it be on the news about a huge drug bust that went down, even about the war on drugs that's still going on to this day. It's pretty much everywhere. But where the place that we don't see them, or that, we, that they are, we don't see them all the time, is in professional sports organizations. Professional sports organizations should test professional athletes for drugs weekly. First, I'll talk about the problem these drugs can have on athletes and on the organizations. And secondly, I'll talk about the solution that I came up with personally and how I can solve it. First up, one foremost, these drugs are illegal. I mean, there's certain guidelines that these athletes have to follow. follow. And when an athlete starts jacking up on steroids, starts having huge doses of caffeine right before a game, that they make the game unfair. And there's a, yeah, there's a reason why they're illegal. According to Matthew J. Minton, a professor of law and, and law and drug testing for athletes, may, or in a journal called Drug Testing and for Athletes in 2016, these athletes are actually told to use certain types of creatine, caffeine, you know, protein by trainers, coaches, weightlifting, weightlifters and many more. They're supposed to. Once they start going to illegal stuff is where these problems can occur. Also, another major thing is the health effects that these athletes can face. There's reports that there's some athletes that when they are actually doing these drugs and we don't catch it right away, they have depression. They suffer from depression outside, outside the court, off the field, and they also have anxiety issues off the field and off, off, off the court. According to Peter Streeland, a professor of health at the University of Adelaide, in a journal named of Social Psychology, published in 2019, many of these drugs have negative effects on athletes when they overuse them. It might seem like a good thing right away. I mean, yeah, you're being better because you're taking illegal substances off the field. I mean, you're killing it on the field. Once you keep going and keep using them, there's gonna be negative results that are gonna go in your head, in your body, and then it can affect loved ones, it can affect the game. Also, according to Robert Millman, a professor, or a professor of pharmaceutical science at Cornell University, in a journal named American Journal on Addictions, published in 2019, there's actually way back history of this. Even the Greeks back in ancient Greece for the, Olymp uh, for the Olympics were using these mushrooms that they thought that the gods brought down on the planet that they could eat and make them stronger, faster, more agile, quicker off their feet, jump higher, etc. So these drugs have been around for a long time, some might say. According to Aaron Sweeney, a uh, professor of sports health and science at Baldwin Wallace University, the journal named Sub Substance Use and Misuse, published in 2020, a lot of athletes know athletes that do drugs. One major thing I can think of is an NFL player named Josh Gordon. Has been suspended every year for the past four years of his NFL career. He came out of college, a first round pick, was projected to do very well, which he did his first couple games, then he started doing weak. Came back the following year after being suspended, played two more games, started doing weak again. Athletes know of other athletes that do these drugs, but they, do, they won't see anything because one, it can affect their on the, on the field, because I mean, they're their teammates and they need help. And then it can also affect the organization. I mean, you start losing, things start changing. Also with these tests, with the uh, organizations not testing, major player is 38% of high school and college athletes are tested for drugs. Only 38%, that's less than half of the colleges and uni college universities and high schools in the US. But yet, when you ask all the parents, 62% 60 of the parents recommended saying they want their kids to get tested. But of those 62% that want their kids to get tested, only 12% do. So the numbers don't lie. Literally, these kids are taking these drugs, not getting tested for it, and not suffering for it, and they're not paying the price. Now I'll talk about the solution that I came up with. 
Major thing is testing before games. For instance, the NFL, they have a game, they have one game a week. Literally test them right before that game. Let's say you have a Sunday game, test on Saturday night or Sunday morning. You have a Thursday night game, test on Wednesday night or Thursday morning. Another major player is MLB. They play in series of three to five games. So you can test them right before the series. These drugs stay in your system a long time. You can test them and track back the date that you have taken the drugs. So let's say, for instance, I took drugs right before a series of the game. I played the three games, and then I get tested before the next series. They can trace it back that I took the drugs before the series before, and I can be suspended, fined, kicked off the team, etc. Suffer from it. There is possible solutions to stopping these athletes from taking these substances. First, I talked about the problem that these drugs have and uh, what they've caused on the field, off the field. Secondly, I talked about the solution that I personally came up with for testing them right before a series of games. Professional sports organizations, organizations should test professional athletes for drugs weekly. We all watch sports whether we love them or not. We all see them all over the place. We see advertising for them. These drugs make the game unfair and make us not want to watch them anymore even though we love them. 620, great job.